First, we'll discuss, can Muhammad, peace be upon him, be the author of the Quran? Whether consciously, subconsciously, or unconsciously. It is rather a tragedy that a person disagrees when a person disclaims that he is not responsible for any great work, whether literary or whether scientific. But this is exactly what the Orientalists and the critics of Islam do when they say, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the author of the Quran. Never ever has the Prophet ever claimed that he was the author of the Quran. Not even a single word of the Quran. He never claimed it. Yet, when he disclaimed that he was not the author, and the Quran happens to be a masterpiece in the work of Arabic, so why will a person disclaim the responsibility of a work which is a masterpiece? Why should he lie? And we know from history, from his youth till the day he claimed prophethood, at the age of 40 years, never has a single lie reported to have been said by Muhammad, peace be upon him. History never reports a single lie. And before he claimed prophethood, he was known for his truthfulness, his honesty, and chastity, and he was given the title Al-Amin, the trustworthy by friends and foes alike. And there are several examples. Even those people, after the prophet claimed prophethood, and they said that he was lying, yet his enemies, his foes, they kept their valuables with the prophet for safety. And this is known when the prophet migrated from Makkah to Medina, and he told his nephew, Hazrat Ali, may Allah be peace with him, that give these valuables to the rightful owners. Even his foes, even after they said he lied, yet they trusted him and kept the valuables with him. Why? And we have the example that Abu Sufyan, who was the chief of one of the tribes of Makkah, when he went to Emperor Heracles and asked him for support against the Prophet, and when the Emperor asked him that, do you know of any instance in which the Prophet lied? Or has he done any injustice? And Abu Sufyan, even though he was the enemy of the Prophet that time, he had to reply, no. So why should a person with such honesty and trust and chastity, why should he lie? Let us analyze the various claims made by Orientalists and the critics of Islam against Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We'll just discuss the major ones. One of the claims made by the critics of Islam is that the Prophet, he lied that he was not the author of the Quran and said it was Almighty God for material gains. We know that there are many men who claim to be prophets, who claim to be preachers, who claim to be saints in order to lead a luxurious life. And we have hundreds and thousands of examples in this world today also. But if we see the lifestyle of the Prophet, he led a more luxurious life before he claimed prophethood than after he claimed prophethood. He was married at the age of 25 to a rich lady by the name of Khatija, may Allah be pleased with her. And his life after claiming prophethood, was unenviable. So if he did for money, his life should be better after claiming prophethood. Like we see today, those people who claim to be prophets and saints and sages. Furthermore, we have records in several Sahih Hadith, including the Hadith narrated by An-Nawi in Riyadh Salin, Hadith number 492, that one of his wives, Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, she said that there were times when fire was not lit in the house for a month or two, 
indicating that food was not cooked for a month or two in the house. And we only survived on dates and water. And sometimes milk given by the neighbors. There are various instances, and even verses mentioned in the Quran, that the life was so simple, though he had all the power, he was the leader, he could have led the most luxurious life in the whole of Arabia. That is the reason that there was an occasion when his wives, they protested. And they said that what is the need for us to lead such a life when we can live a much comfortable life? Immediately, there was a revelation sent by Almighty God in Surah Azab, chapter number 33, verse number 20 and 29, where it says that, O Prophet, tell your consorts, tell your wives, if they care for the enjoyment of this world and the glitter of this world, I will set you free to enjoy this world and give you a handsome reward. But if you care for the life in the year after, you will be rewarded in the next life. That means the wives, they objected that why should we lead such a simple life when we can lead at least a much better life? And immediately the wahi was revealed. But natural wives of the Prophet, then they asked for forgiveness. And they preferred the life in the year after than this world. We have the example in the hadith of Riyaz al Salihin, hadith number 465 and 466, where the Bilal, may Allah be pleased with him, he said that whenever the Prophet received any gifts, he never kept it for himself. Neither did he keep it for the future, and he gave it away to the poor people. And it is mentioned in this very same Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 79. Wo to those who write the book with their own hands and then say, this is from Allah, this is from God. To traffic with it for a miserable price. Wo to those for what the hands do write and what they gain therefrom. Now imagine if the Prophet would have lied that this book is from Almighty God, and when actually he was the author, there were high possibilities that one day he would have been exposed, and he would be cursing himself in the same book. That woe to those who write the book with their own hands, and then say, this is from Allah. If he would have written the Quran and attributed to Almighty God, would have ever mentioned such a verse in the Quran. 